In this tutorial, we will look at using three controls that will take output that we generate from the program, the list box, the text box, and the label. Uh, begin with this form, and this form already has buttons to, uh, to activate the click events that would output information to the text box and that will clear it. Output here to a list box, that button will clear the list box, and at the bottom, output information to a label, and there's a button to reset the label back to the word name. Uh, let's start our program by double clicking the uh, quit button that will give us the click event to go with that button and we'll just type in the command END which will cause our program to terminate whenever we click the quit button. Now go back to the designer and let's begin with the text box. So double click the button write your name to text box. That gives us the click event to go with that and now we want to write a line of code that will output some information to this text box. It's called text name dot text um, and well it's called text name and the property we want is the text property. So we're just going to assume our name is Roger and we're going to write a string constant which is the name Roger between double quotes. And this assignment statement whenever we activate the click event will put the word Roger into the text property of the text box. So we click the button and we see the word Roger appear. So we can use a text box to output information uh, in some cases when we're doing programs in Visual Basic. Now let's extend this information a little bit. Let's suppose we have an employee ID that we want to output as well as the name. Now we can concatenate several things together using the ampersand operator. So that's the shift 7 key. You'll see the ampersand. So in this case, we're going to concatenate the number 1, 2, 3, 4 onto the string Roger, and then concatenate the string employee ID after that. So we're concatenating three things together using these ampersand operators. If you forget to put those in, then you'll get an error on this line. All right, so we're going to create this line of output. Whenever we click the button, the click event will execute, and that information will be uh, written into the text property of the text box and it shows up here. Quit takes us back to the code window. Now uh, let's double click on the clear text box button to see what command we can use to clear out information. Pretty simple. Uh, type the name of the text box, type a dot, and type clear. That's all you need. So now this click event will clear the contents of uh, text name whenever we press the uh, button to activate this click event. Uh, this thing in green is just a comment that I've added showing you uh, or explaining what this uh, text name dot clear command does. Alright, so now we can run the program and when we click write your name to text box the information shows up. When we click clear the text, bo uh, clear the text box then it disappears. Write your name, clear it. Write your name, clear it. Quit. Let's move on now to the list box example. We're going to use a list box to output information and it's done similarly but different. We begin by writing the name of the list box which is list out but this time we have to use dot items dot add and then parentheses. So inside a pair of parentheses we place the information that we want to output to the list box. Now we create the output the same way as we did before we're going to concatenate several things together to generate a string of output. So we have the name Roger concatenated. Uh, this is showing that you do have to have parentheses left and right whenever you're using the listout.items.add command. So now let's run this and whenever you click you activate the click event that causes the output to be generated to the list box. Now with the list box, each time we click the button we generate a new line of output. That is not what will happen with the text box. It does not generate multiple lines of output. Alright, now let's see what we do in order to clear the list box. Uh, start out the same way. You make the name of the list box list out dot items followed by dot clear. So we use the dot clear to um, remove the contents of the text box as well as the list box, but there's a difference. You have to remember the difference between the text box and the list box. Okay, so this just showed you that you can write to the list box, click the button to clear it, and the information disappears. 
Moving on to the label, we'll double click the button that will produce the click event. And if we want to write output to a label, we do it almost identically to the, say, to the way we do for a text box. We use the name of the label and the text property, just as we would the name of the text box and the text property. We generate the output again, same as before. We have three pieces of information, and those three are um, placed together or constructed together using these concatenation operators. String constant, Roger followed by the ampersand, followed by here a number, notice there's no quotes around it, followed by the ampersand, and followed by another string constant which is enclosed within double quotes. So all of those are, are concatenated together and then assigned to the text property of label. So we click the button and you see the new output. The, the forms needs to be extended a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Okay, so now we need to go back and finish this up by implementing the reset button. For reset, for a label, we have a different circumstance here. We don't have a clear option. We just need to reset the text property to what it began with, which was just the word name. So we have a single assignment statement that sets the text property of label name to the string constant NAME. Okay, now let's run the program and test all cases. So you can add, uh, you can write to the list box, text box, and label. You can clear the text box, clear the list box, and reset the label. This illustrates the use of those three controls for output. Now let's save the project. And this concludes the tutorial on how to write output information to these controls.